Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations of a psychological, mental health, emotional health paradigm. We do that as often as we can, usually several times per week. We make that happen. And ultimately, we try to do that wherever we can and in whatever way we can. Hopefully, this is super helpful to you, and we begin to uh, do that for your benefit. This is about emotional manipulation, two-part series. Um, emotional manipulation probably one of the most uh, common things that I deal with in my coaching practice because people want what they want when they want it, and being able to control another person through emotions is something that many people learn how to do as children, carry with them into adulthoods, and if they're in toxic families, it almost becomes habit without them even realizing that that's an issue. Um, so what are some signs of emotional manipulation? We can talk about that. Also, if you're looking for coaching, please feel free to reach out at PO Perception on Twitter in the About Me section of this YouTube page. A um, couple of things there. Um, so you can do that and uh, we can make something happen from there. First is constant judgment. Em emotional manipulation is based on your fear. And so if you constantly feel judged, condemned, or otherwise uh, negatively impacted, you will most likely be experiencing at least some level of emotional manipulation. Now, the idea that a person is trying to get you to question your own uh, lucidity, sanity, or right to have your own emotions that are different from their own is what's trying to be created through that process. It obviously is not kind. It also is not very effective in the long run, but in the short run, if you, if your mind gets scrambled and you feel the need to constantly defend yourself, then you are going to be less likely to have the energy to really stand up for yourself if things get emotionally out of balance. This means the person who is, is enacting the emotional manipulation actually has more power than the average individual because you're, you're backing down in ways that you normally wouldn't. This is also common when a person will either elongate answers in an effort to get you to doubt yourself, therefore giving a lot of detail, causing you to scramble your brain and think that you have uh, been, been ill-informed, under-informed, or just not in a good space, or the other side of it, which is the manipulation of giving short answers, not giving you much to go on, and then accusing you of being uh, selective or assuming or putting words in their mouth. Basically, the idea is using a retelling of narrative and a shifting of facts in order to create a power struggle for the person being manipulated and the person seeking control. Remember that manipulators are mainly looking for the ability to feel in control at all times. And so if a person feels they have consistent, constant, and continual control, they often will try to push for things that ultimately are not in the best interest of the relationship, but maybe in their best interest if they're not, um, you know, open and honest and forthright with their intentions. The next thing is they will fence build. They'll try to, at least on some, or they will love bomb. Sorry, fence building is for the next audio, but they'll love bomb. So that means they will flood you with positive emotions, positive um connections and just giving you everything you want for short spans of time. This is designed to see what your triggers are, what the things that matter to you most are, and also it's designed to get you to be dependent on their approval. So when you depend on someone's approval who is love bombing you, they can take away that and then gaslight you and make you think that you're expecting too much of them or that you're in some way not being kind to them or not doing what they ask you to do. And it's hard because especially if someone has a coax um, or comorbid um, mental or emotional instability or illness, that individual often doesn't want to deal with the challenges related to finding the way, the right way to be and how to step forward from there uh, and making decisions around the concept of you know, making better, healthy, and and balanced uh, choices. And especially if a person doesn't feel like their choices are being rewarded, they can be gaslit into believing that standing up to the person who's trying to manipulate them at any level is going to lead them to mental or emotional loss, and that level of loss is not something that the average person wants to deal with at any level. So 
again. Uh, we can close out from there. And until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.